Right now, we're going to jump out of our, over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report. Check that out under the newsletter tab at TFNN. It comes out every Monday morning. Teddy's also got a webinar coming up one week from today, folks. Capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads with Teddy Kegstat. That's going to be coming up a week from today, 4 till 5 p.m. Eastern time. The cost is $97. It's not a recurring subscription, folks. It's a 60-minute webinar. It will be archived. I imagine we'll have a group a good group in there, just as we had for Teddy's last webinar, and I'm looking forward to hearing what he's going to be talking about. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you filling in for me for a couple of days while I was gone, man. I was able to catch uh, some of those programs as I was over in Europe, man. I appreciate it, as always. Um, and let's jump into it, Teddy. you got a webinar coming up a week from today. If we can kick things off with the webinar, talking about calendar stock option spreads, capitalizing on time. If you could just give maybe the listeners a, a brief preview of what you'll be talking about next Wednesday. Sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to next Wednesday's webinar. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, the whole topic is gonna be calendar spreads, and we're gonna go through, you know, basically the decision tree on how you apply these trades. You know, what type of expirations you look for, and uh, the value of that type of uh, option trading strategy that it gives to both, you know, beginner and advanced traders, especially with market timing and and stuff like that. It's a way, great way of really putting on a you know a trade that you know it's a calendar spread is something you're not trading on an intraday basis it's something you put on and you don't necessarily forget about it but you do have to have a lot of time that passes um, for the trade to manifest itself but it's a very easy strategy to apply um, it's definitely something that you can uh, work in with whether you're holding positions in stocks and that's what we go over too is that it's not just an option strategy to trade certain market directions or lack thereof uh, but also how you can incorporate that into your portfolio with stocks that you already have and you can kind of add a little you know it's you know people know about covered calls well that's a very simple strategy but it really doesn't make people very much money it's something they used to talk about years ago this is something that's totally different it's a way of adding a little bit of extra juice to your uh, portfolio while you're still maintaining a stock position as well which I thought when we were talking about this webinar um, and you putting it together uh, I remember having that conversation with you, and, and that was the most intriguing myself. And I love options, man. Um, calendars, myself, I, I not that I struggle, but because of those two elements of things, whether you're buying a short term, selling a longer term, uh, I'm really looking forward to that hour myself, man, digging into that and finding out you know, what you're talking about. So I can't wait for next Wednesday. With that in mind, man, let's talk about the market. Always great we talked to you on Wednesday, so usually we talk to you on Fed Day. Today is a Fed Day. Uh, what do you think about this market? What are you looking for for action, if anything, from the chairman at 2 o'clock in the, in the press conference to follow? Well, I think short term leading up to the, uh, the number at 2.15, uh, I think what you're really going to see is probably – a little bit of trend action for the next hour or so, and then it's going to probably tighten up as we get into the lunchtime hours and become pretty flatline, I would think, across the board in the S&Ps as well as the currencies. The dollar's been under pressure for a few days. You have a nice little move going on this morning, and I think that's because yields have retracted in both the 30-year and the 10-year, especially over the past few hours. So you're catching a nice bid in the Euro-US dollar, um, but overall, even the pound-US dollar, you know, in the, most of the European currencies, I would look at it as a corrective move right now. So dollar strength is not so much because of what's going on with the Fed. It's it's the the trend is pretty stretched. You know, just if there was no Fed meeting, I think it would be pretty likely that we'd be having the bounce that we're having right now, short term this week. There's nothing very radical. You know, except for especially when you look at the currencies, the ones that have the most extreme move over the last week or so is pretty much like the New Zealand and the Australian dollar. Those are the heaviest beaten up currencies. The yen hasn't really moved much. It's hanging below its highs. I think a lot of that has to do with they're waiting on our Fed decision because you have the Bank of Japan that also came out with some uh, speak last week. So definitely, I think we will see after today um, a lot of reaction because it'll be really interesting to see what Powell's uh, tone is and how that makes the BOJ react. And I think if t if he remains fairly hawkish, um, that you'll probably see a reaction from the Bank of Japan within the next week or so as well. Yeah, that yen chart is something, right, man? Pushing 147.72 right now from just 138 recently. And boy, it's been, you know, some pullbacks, but a pretty straight trip from that 127 low, man, with some decent pullbacks. But we almost got it all back from where we were at 151, mm -hmm. which is remarkable. Crude um, is helping that least. as well. I'm sorry, say that again? I said crude is helping that as well. I mean, we what? pretty much have a set floor now of about 70 to $75 in crude. I would be stunned if we get below that price any time in the next two years, 
really, really, honestly. I think that's pretty much a floor. So we're looking at seeing it 100 plus, plus dollar oil within the next couple of months and definitely as we move into 2024. Yeah, you beat me to the question, man. When I was thinking about <clears throat> talking to you, crude is always in the forefront of the mind. We've had that discussion for some time. Uh, on a shorter term basis, and I love the longer term look, and I probably agree with you, man, because, you know, $70 crude, in the context of where we are, in the context of prices for everything, um, you know, it's always interesting, Teddy. I was just in Europe, of course, when you're covering for me, and having the conversation with Europeans, man, they they laugh at the notion that we're overpaying for crude when, boy, their costs of crude uh, are priced number one in a liter, and, and it's just just so much more expensive than what we're paying in general. But on a shorter term basis, let's say you know, because we got shorter term traders out there, we got traders out there trading whether it's crude even on an intraday basis. Uh, what do you think of light sweet crude at like ninety dollars right now? It's been quite a run from seventy eight bucks, let alone the run we had from sixty seven dollars less than three months ago. Do you see some action here? You're looking for a plateau around ninety. You're thinking maybe a test that eighty four dollars high from August. What do you think of crude at ninety dollars right now? I kind of like it where it's at right now. I think you could see a correction back to probably maybe around 80. I don't think you'll touch the $70 or any upper 70 area for a while. I think right now, especially unless you see a big pullback in yields. If that happens, if all of a sudden the Fed stops being hawkish and puts on not just a pause, but has a real dovish outlook for the next like somewhere in the next six months, I think you might see a, a short term correction. I mean, crude has had a nice run up over the past, like, what is it, uh, since September? end of august we were at 77 you're looking yeah. at a 13 dollar move which is really not necessarily demand driven it's more kind of event driven so once we have the demand factor and if we have to watch while supply goes you know we're, we're in the fall we're switching the refinery for the way we you know process crude in this country that always causes an uptick in oil as well so i think it's going to be hard to see the market get below 80 bucks a barrel and even if it does I would be in a buy break, buy break posture. I would be very careful selling into those lows. You know, I think nice. you're really long term and short term is going to be pushing back above 100. We got a question in the Tigers Den, Teddy. Uh, it's talking about the China slowdown. Do you see, how do you see the China slowdown potentially impacting the U.S. dollar is the question. Do you got any insight into that? Um, well, actually, the, the, the China slowdown is, is kind of an interesting thing because of the way BRICS are starting to come into play. And I think that is, if you see, over, the way I see it is like this. Inflation has come to the point where, you know, everyone's watching their, their, their pocketbook across America, you know. And I've been joking about, you know, little Joey getting screwed at Christmas this year. <laughs> it's going to happen, you know. And here's the thing is, if little Joey doesn't get his G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip, well, where does that come from? It comes from China. That means China's not making those GI Joes. You know, I mean, it's an, a simplified situation, but that's really expands into everything. And I think that's yeah. going to give strength to the dollar in the short run. So, I, that. I love it, man. Teddy, I appreciate it as always. We look forward to talking next Wednesday, and I look forward to the options webinar next Wednesday as well, man. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, brother. Thanks, Tommy. Have a good one. Thanks. Folks, we'll be right back. Stay tuned.